This video will show you how to factor trinomials in this form, x squared plus bx plus c. Remember, factoring is the opposite of multiplying. So let's go ahead and multiply these two binomials out and see what we get. This is just a matter of using FOIL. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. 5 times x is 5x. And 5 times 3 is 15. And you know that this in the middle is going to be combined. And we get x squared plus 8x plus 15 which is exactly the polynomial down here I'm asking you to factor. So we obviously know how this polynomial will factor out since we just multiplied. This trinomial is going to factor into two separate binomials. Of course, the big question is, well, how do I come up with those two binomials? Well, the whole lesson is going to boil down to being able to answer simple questions like this. Can you name two numbers that multiply to give you 24 that add to give you 10? Two numbers that multiply to give you 24 that add to give you 10. If you thought 6 and 4, you got it because 6 times 4 is 24, 6 plus 4 is 10. This pair of numbers is unique. There are lots of things that multiply to give you 24, but only these two add to give you 10. Like, you know, 3 times 8 would give me 24, but they don't add to give me 10. 2 times 12 would give me 24, but they don't add to give me 10. So this answer right here will be unique. Another set of numbers, can you name two numbers that will multiply to give you 30, that when you add them you get 11? Multiplies to give you 30, adds to give you 11 would be 6 and 5. And of course it doesn't matter if I say 6 and 5 or 5 and 6. This right here is what factoring boils down to, answering this kind of question. Last one of this type, name two numbers that multiply to 8 and then add to give you 6. Two numbers that multiply to give you 8 that will add to give you 6 are going to be 4 and 2. Now I'm going to shift gears for a second and go back to multiplying. We just foiled out a problem like this a minute ago. Do this again. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. x times 4 is 4x. And 2 times 4 is 8. And then we put this together and we get x squared plus 6x plus 8. Well, what does that have to do with this little riddle stuff I've been asking you back here? Well, look, where did this 8 come from? The 8 came from the foiling process where we multiplied 4 times 2. See, two numbers that multiply to give you 8, that add to give you 6. Where did this 6 come from? It came from adding these two like terms together. And where did the 2 and the 4 come from? Right there. So that we're going to start with our x's in the front of the parentheses, and then we're going to answer this kind of question and come up with the numbers that add to give us this number in the middle that multiplies to give us this last number. So let's look at a couple examples thinking that way. So here's a trinomial. We know it's going to have to factor into two binomials, so we draw the binomials with the parentheses. The only thing that multiplies together to give x squared would be x times x. And then I have to decide on my signs. Well, if this is a positive 24 and this is a positive 10, what I'm really saying to myself is what multiplies to give me a positive 24, that when I add them I also get a positive 10. Well, only way that happens is for both of these to be positive. And then what multiplies to give you 24 that adds to give you 10 would be 6 and 4. Now 6 and 4 are not the only two numbers that multiply to give you 24, but they are the only ones that multiply to give you 24 that at the same time add to give you 10. Another one like that, put your parentheses down, has to be x and x. Now I'm going to change some thinking here and I'll explain this a little better in a couple of screens, but I want you to be in the habit of whatever that middle sign is, I want you to automatically put it in the front parentheses all the time. It's going to matter big time a little bit later in this lesson. Then we look at this last sign two numbers that multiply together to give us a positive 30. Well, the only way to get a positive in a product is either a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. That will give us a positive answer. So, if the last sign is positive, I know that the two numbers I multiplied together were either both positive or both negative. If I've already decided that this one's positive, then automatically this one has to be positive. And then I say, what multiplies together to give me 30 that adds to give me 11 would be 6 and 5. Foil it up and you can see that it checks. Of course, at any time on these videos, you can stop, see if you can factor it on your own, and then listen to my explanation. Start with x and x. 
middle sign automatically coming down here. I'm looking at that last sign. Since that last sign is positive, I know that my signs in the parentheses will have to be the same because that's the only way I will get a positive product. So that's going to have to be positive. Since I decided that was positive already, and I know that the signs are the same, that's got to be positive. And then you're saying what multiplies to give you 21, that adds to give you 10, would be 7 and 3. Another one, x, x. Take that middle sign, bring it right here. Because that sign is positive, I know that the signs are the same. So obviously, since I put a plus here, there's going to have to be a plus here. And we're saying what multiplies to give us 56, that adds to give us 15, which will be 8 and 7. Now, notice that that's a minus there. It's not going to change a whole lot in my setup. X, X. But because my middle sign is negative, I'm putting a minus sign in the first parentheses. I look at that positive sign there. That tells me that the signs are the same. So since I've already put a minus in this parenthesis, that one's going to have to be minus. The real mathematics of it is the fact that we're saying what multiplies to give you positive 36, that when you add them, you get negative 12. The only way that's going to happen is if both of these signs are negative, and the numbers at work are 6 and 6. Same scenario, x, x in the front. Bring that sign down, it's minus. Because that sign is plus, I know the signs are the same. And feel free on your papers to write these little notes to yourself. That'll help you keep the sign rules straight. So that's minus, therefore that'll have to be minus. And I'm saying what multiplies to give me 12, that adds to give me 7. I'm not really saying negative 7 anymore because I've already made these signs in the parentheses work out the way I want it to be. And that'll be 4, and that'll be 3. So what we've looked at right now is this sign rule. If the last sign is positive, then both signs will be the same as whatever the middle number's sign was. Well, that's why I was telling you to put the middle sign in the first parentheses. And what you say to yourself is what multiplies together to equal the last number that adds to equal the middle number. You might say, why am I saying add? Well, it has to do with the signs being the same. You might recall from doing sign numbers the rule that when they are the same signs, you add them, same signs, sum. So I have x, x, because that's plus. I put a plus there automatically. Because that's plus, I know the signs are the same. So that'll also be plus. And then it's what multiplies to give me 12 that adds to give me 8. And the reason it's adds is because those two signs are the same. Same signs sum. And the numbers are 6 and 2. I put this one here just to make the point about the signs. x, x. Because that's a minus, automatically the minus is going there. Plus in the last position tells me that the signs are the same. Therefore, since that's a minus, that has to be a minus. And then what multiplies has to be the 6 and the 2. So those are very similar, it's just the signs are different. So this is just a suggestion that we've been following for the last several problems, and that is always place the middle sign in your first parentheses. And then look at the last sign to decide what to put in the second parentheses. And this is going to be very helpful in a couple of minutes when we have different signs in the parentheses. So we will continue this in the next video titled Factoring Easy Trinomials Part 2.